finish off this lesson with a couple of examples. So first of all, we're going to evaluate some inverse trig functions. Now, in this example, basically what they're asking for is to find the angle measurement in radians that gives the result of negative one half. Okay, so we want to find out when sine of inverse negative one half will be what in radians. Well, if you remember, all students take calculus, okay? So sine of negative one half will occur in two spots. So sine can be negative here, and sine can be negative here, okay? Now, the sine inverse function, though, what is it restricted upon as far as when you look at its range? So if we were to go back here, whoa, that's crazy. But if you look at sine, where's sine? Um, here's sine. So sine, Oh, no, I'm circling because you can, sorry. Um, so sine is right here. We're restricted from negative pi half to pi half, okay? So we must only include this region in here. So then I'm going to be looking specifically at this angle. Now sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it would be 1 over 2. Now this actually is a ratio that we have memorized. So we know this to be pi 6 but it would be either negative pi 6, or another way of writing that is 11 pi 6. Now try putting that into your calculator and see what you get as the result, and if it matches close. Now of course it won't give you to you in radian form, it'll give you a decimal approximation. Okay, now let's look at this function, example number two. So this is asking me, first of all, find out where is it that I'm going to get sine of inverse of 12 over 13? And once I've found this location, then I want you to take the tangent of that location. Okay, well, 12 over 13, sine. We know that the inverse, I'm going to be looking between pi half and negative pi half. Okay, and 12 over 13, so it's positive. So that means opposite over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13. Well, I can use a good little Pythagorean theorem, and when I do the math, I find out this side would be length 5. So I've done the first piece. Now I need to take the tangent of this angle. So tangent is to what? Opposite over adjacent. So it would be, tw um, opposite is 12 over 5. There we go. Now we have just evaluated two examples of inverse trigonometric functions. Now let's solve a trigonometric function. Okay, so we are told that secant x equals 3. So we need to solve for secant. Well, one way we could do this, we need to undo secant. So we could take the inverse of secant of both sides. And then you could try to use your calculator. So go secant of inverse of 3. Do you, does it have a result? No, there is no secant inverse. Oh, okay, let's try a different way of approaching this. We do know cosine, right? Cosine inverse is in our calculator. So let's just rewrite this as 1 over cosine x equals 3. And since I don't want to really deal with, um, I want to undo the having cosine in the denominator, so I'll take the reciprocal of both sides. So cosine of x equals 1 third. So I'm asking myself, where do I have an angle that will give me a measurement of 1 over 3, okay? Well, if I, I can just put this into my calculator. I take the cosine inverse of both sides, okay? And I would end up with the cosine inverse of 1 third. And the decimal approximation, make sure you're in radians, is approximately 1.23. Okay, now let's talk about this. Where is this located? Now remember, cosine, if we're looking at the inverse, it is restricted, I believe, from 0 to pi. Okay, um, let me double check that because I'm questioning myself. If I go back to this side, cosine inverse is from 0 to pi. Great, good, I had it right. Okay, now we are finding that at 1.23, now remember this is 0, this is pi halves, 
or decimal approximation, 1.57. So then this angle is approximately right there. That would be 1.23 radians, okay? So that is a solution for x. Now let's go back up to the top before you say you're done. Notice up here, I want you to solve for the entire circle. Now my calculator will only give me one response because you notice it's only going to give me the value within the restricted domain of this function. And the domain for this function is between 0 and pi. Now, can I get cosine to be 1.23 in any other place? Well, we know again, cosine can also be positive in the fourth quadrant. So here I can also get a value of one-third. So it would be 1, and the hypotenuse is 3. Now, 1.23, that's in radians, so I can find the other result either by saying 2 pi minus 1.23, and then that would give me the result, an approximation of the other value for x. Or how else could I do that? I could do, um, I guess I could do 3 pi half plus 1.23 if you like, but this seems to be easier. So I do that and get a decimal approximation. Let me see, I don't have my calculator handy. Okay. Um, sorry, folks, I didn't have this handy. 2 times pi, which is 6.28, minus 1.23 is 5.053. Is that what you're getting? Okay. Those are the two solutions for x that would make this true. Now check it back into the original problem. Go secant of those two values, does it come really close to three? Okay, I think that's it. There you go. Have fun.